the season for board exam results as well as the results of entrance tests like neat and je has just come to an end the media and schools are celebrating the toppers in board exams and uh, coaching centers are uh, aggressively competing to claim credit for uh, the winners in entrance tests however all this celebration hides a very uncomfortable truth uh, something like the dark side of our education system an underbelly so to say uh, which few would like to talk about now over 20 lakh students that's about 2 million students have failed in class 12 exams across boards in india we have about 30 boards in india and across boards we have about 2 million students having failed in class 12 board exams we are not talking about the class 10 board exams at all it's a staggering figure by any standard uh just to give you an idea of what kind of number we are talking about if the 20 lakh students the failed students are to live and only they live in a particular location that would be one of the top 15 cities in india it would be larger than uh, coimbatore bhopal um, uh, patna uh, visakhapatnam indore many other cities such is the number we are looking at and to project this number over the next 5 years if we are looking at 2 million one year then we are looking at a crore of failed students in 5 years right so that's a frightening scenario so the next time you see a teenage construction worker hammering away at a stone or uh, lifting some bricks uh, you must realize that possibly he could be a failed student in class 12 and uh, lost out on life and is doomed to an exploited existence uh, forever is condemned to an exploited existence forever now let's dig a little deeper uh, we are looking at 30 boards across india but if you look at the, just the three boards uttar pradesh madhya pradesh and bihar they make up for more than 1 million failures uttar pradesh accounts for about 6.3 lakh madhya pradesh for 3.26 lakhs and bihar for 2.12 lakh together these three states make up for 11.7 lakh that's about 1. Point, uh, 1.2 million year 12 lakh students if you add just four more boards including cbsc which is a central board you are looking at 17 lakh failed students that's about 1.7 million now that must give you an idea that 2 million figure across 30 boards if you are looking at 1.7 million across 7 boards 2 million across 30 boards is a very very conservative estimate all right now how about the percentage of failures here too we have some shockers from the numbers nios for which the data is available only for october 2022 has reported 52% failure more than half the students who took the nios class 12 exams failed uh last year we don't have the data for this year i think they have just released the uh, class 12 results just released or maybe it to release for madhya pradesh it's about 45% failure that is half the students who took the exam in class 12 failed in telangana which is known house uh, known as a powerhouse of uh, it services and software 33% failure that's one out of every 3 persons who took the exam failed uttar pradesh 24% or 25% nearly which is about 1/1/4 1/4 of all students failed the most disturbing data actually comes from the comparison between 2022 and 2023 so there is a huge jump in some boards for example uttar pradesh saw a jump from 15% of failures in 2022 to 25% failures a 10% jump in failed students in class 12 cbsc a rather renowned board a central board uh, had the numbers jump from 7% to 13% 
Madhya Pradesh went up steeply from 28% to 45% failures. Remember, uh, we must consider that uh, it is very difficult to fail in class 12 for students, for any student across the country, because states and boards do not want students to fail. It is not as if they are eliminating students. They do not want students to fail. So any attempt, for example, any attempt to write anything, you write anything in the answer sheet, you get some marks. In fact, some board, a particular state's board, had uh, decided to give one mark for replicating or just copying the question onto the answer book some time ago. So if you just copy the entire question paper onto the answer book, you got some marks. And if those marks were to come nearly 25, 26, or 27, 28, pass percentage being 33, the state would give grace marks and make the students pass. So it is extraordinarily difficult to make, uh, to fail in class 12 exam for any student. Then we are still in this mess, right? So what can be done? So it is, it is really a very disturbing scenario. All right, what can be done? Now, there are a couple of structural options. And there is at least one uh, different kind of an option, a content option. So we'll discuss the structural option. The first option is advancing the exam uh, to a few months earlier than where they are right now. Bihar shows the way. Bihar State Board, even though they account for a very large number of failures, you know, 2.12 lakh students failed in class 12 in Bihar Board, but Bihar had its class 12 exams in January and February. And then the results were declared in March. And in April, supplementary or compartment exams were conducted for the failed students. And these results were declared in May. By May 31st, even the results of the compartment exam was already declared. So the students who failed in the first attempt had the opportunity to take the exam again and still have the results. If they pass, they will have the results by May 31st. And they are still eligible to apply for higher education, apply for courses in colleges. So they don't lose out a year. So by advancing the board exams to Jan Feb uh, and also allowing the st failed students to take supplementary exam very quickly, following immediately after the results, the board has made it possible for the, uh, has given an opportunity for the failed students to uh, not to lose out on the academic year and continue the studies in colleges if they want. Now, in comparison, UP, for example, has the compartment exam coming up only in July. So it is unlikely that the results will be out anytime soon. And the students who clear the exam in the July attempt, uh, these are the failed students in the earlier attempt, may not have the opportunity to pursue their education. They may lose out a year. So it may be a good idea for all boards across the country, all states across the country to advance the board exams uh, a few months earlier, maybe to January, February. Now, the second structural option is actually to split the exam into two or three sessions, two sessions in October, November of the previous year and um, Jan, Feb or February, March in the next and subsequent year. So split the subjects. So somebody could take October uh, some subjects in October, November and could take the other subjects in uh, March, April or February, March and clear uh, the boards. There is no logic for making a student appear for all the subjects together in one sitting. There is no need. NIYS already follows this split system. So that is spreading out the subjects across two sessions is another way out, easing the burden on the students. So we may have more number of students passing the board exams. Now, this may eventually pave way for uh, the on-demand exams. The third option is not a structural option, but it actually involves attacking the root cause of the problem. Uh, remember, most of the students appearing for class 12 this year lost out two years uh, in between during the COVID pandemic. Now, this learning loss has become very critical because 
they have not recovered that learning loss, but they have moved up to the age appropriate class. So this, for example, the students who are appearing in class 12 this year were all declared past in class 10 by most of the states. Most of the states just gave pass marks to all the students in class 10. They did not have exams at all. 100% research in class 10, two years ago, 2021. If you check any board's result, 2021, 100% pass. Did they have exams? No. COVID pandemic. But they were in class 11 and then they were in class 12. So higher percentage of failures in class 12 could be a result of that uh, problem we faced two years ago. So a learning recovery has to happen uh, to compensate for the loss uh, that they had in two years. In normal terms, there is loss. We have reports saying that class five students cannot read class two textbooks and all that. The, those losses happen every year. Now, COVID pandemic accentuated that loss. So there are states which have a very active uh, learning recovery program. For example, Arunachal Pradesh has instituted a learning recovery program uh, over the next three years to make up for the learning loss during the COVID pandemic. So what this means is that the students acquire the ability to participate in the classroom discussions. Uh, they need not cover all that they have, uh, they have, they should have learned and they have not learned in the previous years. That is not possible. But at least the critical components of what they should have learned in order to participate and in order to make sense of what is going on in class 11 and 12 can be done. Now, this is a long-term project. This has to be a long-term project. It involves a lot of work. It involves baseline testing. It involves uh, creating content for the learning recovery process. And it involves uh, training the trainers. It involves uh, training the teachers to conduct the learning recovery programs, giving them enough time to do this separately from uh, what they are dealing with. I mean, the time they are taking to deal with the textbooks, all of that. But this is not a band-aid solution. It actually attacks the root cause of the problem. And most students who go through such a program uh, will have uh, achieved some grade level competencies and will be able to clear class 12 exams. There may be more mechanisms to bring down the failures in uh, class 12. But what is clear is that we cannot have millions of students, 2 million this year. We don't know what number we will have next year students failing in class 12, failing in the school final years, losing out on life, and we can't still talk about demographic dividends. They just don't go together. We owe it to the students, particularly to those who are vulnerable and uh, who are looking at a doomed life if they fail in class 12. We must help them. We must find ways to help them to do well in life.